Hi, this is Bizwo with me, Farah Nabilah Wazir. Malaysia Cyber Security Center of Excellence, CCOE, has the potential to be an international destination to address emerging cyber threats. Prime Minister Dato Sri Anwar Ibrahim said the center would address some 12,000 shortfall of cyber security professionals in the country. It was a more secure digital environment. We can collaborate to develop plans that encourage information sharing and expertise exchange between government agencies and other st st uh, stakeholders, including sharing actionable threat intelligence. We commend BlackBerry for helping to upskill our next generation of cyber defenders, accelerating our goal to bolster national and regional security and innovation. Speaking at the opening of the CCOE, the Prime Minister commended BlackBerry for helping Malaysia to upscale its next generation of cyber defenders, accelerating its goal to bolster national and regional security and innovation. He reiterated that Malaysia has a shortfall of 12,000 cybersecurity professionals and needs 25,000 workers in cybersecurity by 2025. Domestic tourism in Malaysia experienced a notable increase of 16.1% in the fourth quarter of 2023, welcoming 54.3 million visitors. When comparing quarters, Chief Statistician Datuk Sri Dr. Mohd Uzi Mahidin said domestic visitors' numbers rose by 1.6% from the third quarter of last year. He also said domestic tourism expenditure for the second quarter quarter increased 29.5% to 23.8 billion ringgit. Overall, Malaysia's domestic tourism performance for 2023 saw 210.9 million visitors, marking a 22.9% rise from the previous year. As for domestic tourism expenditure, it amounted to 84.9 billion ringgit, an increase of 32%. In terms of performance of related tourism industry, the index of theme park revenue increased 49% year-on-year, followed by domestic airport arrivals, highway, highway traffic and retail sales of automotive fuel. Malaysia's overnight policy rate OPR is anticipated to be maintained at 3% throughout the year. According to Public Investment Bank, this aligns with Bank Negara's perspective that the existing OPR level is beneficial to the economy. The central bank projects headline inflation to hover between 2% and 3.5% in 2024, taking into account the implementation of fuel subsidy rationalisation. The research firm said both domestic policy factors and external influences pose significant upside risks to the inflation outlook, especially in energy and food sectors, if blanket fuel subsidies are modified. Essentially, any adjustments would directly impact headline inflation due to the significant portion of fuel within the consumer price index basket. However, the magnitude of these risks depends on the possibility of subsequent repercussions where companies might elevate prices to offset increased costs. SMP Global Ratings expects a 5.1% growth this year in Asia-Pacific APAC, excluding China and Japan. According to the agency, the growth will be supported by recovery in external trade and easing of inflation momentum. It also expects a slight improvement in export demand driven by the electronic sector, while restrictive interest rates would continue to weigh on growth. The rating agency said export volume growth is also expected to moderate due to modest global demand prospects. It also predicts that trade-focused developed economies like South Korea, Taiwan and Singapore will see growth, while countries with more internal demand like Japan and Australia might experience a decline. Emerging markets in Asia, in the meantime, are expected to have strong growth overall with India, Indonesia, the Philippines and Vietnam in the lead. Bursa Malaysia ended flat today ahead of the statistical releases in the U.S., especially the personal consumption expenditure in inflation. At 5 p.m., the FBM KLCI inched up 0.88 points to 1,538.42 points. 
Guinness, Trump loses with 570 counters, up 472 counters down and 491 traded unchanged. According to Bank Muamalat, the general tone in the equities market remained guarded ahead of U.S. statistical releases. Meanwhile, Malaysia's inflation rate of 1.8% in February may suggest that consumers would be more cautious in their spending plans. And that's all the time we have for Peace World. I'm Farhan Abilah Wazir. Keep tuning in to TV Tiga.